Hey there, this is John Stoffer, and I'm here to bring you a tech tip from MCAM Northwest. Today I want to take a minute to talk about circle segment tools and the technology that Mastercam uses in the background to process for these tools, called accelerated finishing. Let's first take a look at why this is an important application and then take a look at some actual examples. So here on screen, I have in front of me some geometry to kind of describe what's going on with this type of tooling. Let's first focus on this middle one here. I have a green line that represents the actual geometry that I am trying to cut. I also have this blue dashed line up here. This indicates my tolerance or how far away from that geometry I can be. Then I have the lines in between that show the scalloping of the tools after they have gone over that green geometry. These all come to peaks because I've set these step overs so that these scallops come together at that maximum tolerance. And with this, we can see exactly what's happening when we change tool sizes. Here, I have my purple one. This is a small tool. Then you have the red one, which is a larger tool. And then the blue one, which is a much larger tool. And that blue line really does a good job of showing what it's like to run accelerated finishing or these circle segment tools. Circle segment tools are typically defined with very large radiuses packed into tight packages. Let's take a look at a tool as an example. Here we have a barrel form tool. This uses a very wide definition on the side here. We can see the profile radius as 0.75, even though my cutting diameter is 0.5. So I'm getting a much larger radius tool in a tight package. This can be done a few different ways, and there's multiple definitions for these uh, type of tools inside of Mastercam. But when we run them across any surface, it means that we can keep the tolerance with less passes by using a larger radius tool. And this is true whether we're doing flat surfaces, wide curve surfaces, tighter curve surfaces, we always have less passes with these larger tools. So why don't we use a large ball end mill for everything? Well, maybe because it doesn't fit or because it's not really a good application for what we're working on. So let's take a look at an example. Here, I wanna focus on the right hand side of this part. I've got this feature here. And if I look at it from a front view and then turn off my shading, we can see what this looks like. It's kind of a bowl shape but it's also got this undercut here, which we'll deal with in a minute. But you can see how a shape like this would not really be that conducive to a large ball end mill because of that tip. If we look at this very first toolpath and run it in backplot, we can see the problem. This half inch ball end mill looks pretty good, but it needs to go really far past the bottom of this first feature just to get that end cut. And that's because of that tip we need to compensate for it. So you end up with a lot of passes here, more than we probably want. If we take a look at the second toolpath, there are many less passes. This is because we're now using a barrel form tool. This is exactly the same toolpath. The lead motion is a little bit different here, but otherwise we're doing exactly the same thing. And we don't have to go nearly as deep because of the shape of the tool. Because we have that wide profile, we're able to step down the same way tip of the tool is much flatter, so we don't have to go quite as far to get the same result. If we take a look at the next one here, it's really the same thing, just with a bigger step over. But the thing is that even with a large step over, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Again, because we have that large radius on the side, that means we can usually take less passes and get the same result, or we can take the same number of passes and get a better result. The final toolpath in this group is a multi-axis toolpath. I'm using the unified morph strategy here. Now, if I'm on a three-axis machine, I might think that I don't need multi-axis, but it does help, especially if I want to compensate for the tool above the equator of the tool, or undercut. Multi-axis does a much better job of handling this type of motion than 3D does. So if you're going to do any of this kind of work, you might consider using a multi-axis license, even if you don't have multi-axis machines. I want to look at one more example. So on this part, I'm going to be cutting this and it's kind of a shallow angle here, a shallow dish. And 
you know, the standard approach for this would be, again, a ball end mill. This is an equal scallop approach, and it's a very aesthetically pleasing toolpath, but it's not necessarily the right choice, because I can get this done faster with a lens shape tool instead. Here I'm using the exact same toolpath, literally just copied down, but now I'm using a lens tool. That means that we're probably about the same on cycle time, maybe plus or minus a little bit, but we're going to get a nicer result out of this because of that wider radius. Alternatively, we can try increasing our step over by using the unified toolpath instead. Rather than being locked into a specific step over, we can give it a maximum step over and allow it to change that toolpath and condense step overs where necessary in order to maintain the nice surface finish that we're going for. Or the final option here shows us a fully unlocked five axis toolpath. This allows us to keep the tool on the leading edge connecting with the material, which would probably give us the best cutting action and the best result of all. Of course, we'd need a multi-axis machine to do this, but if you have it, it's a great way to take advantage of this type of tooling or this interesting geometry. Before we go, I wanted to show you a few screenshots from Verify to really show you the result of using these tools. You can see that when we're using these accelerated finishing tools, we're getting some really beautiful results, and oftentimes with a shorter cycle time. So I hope that was helpful for you. If you like this video, go ahead and hit that like button and subscribe to our YouTube channel. But more importantly, we just want to hear from you. What do you want to learn about in Masterkin? You can leave us a comment below, or you can email us if you have any questions about Mastercam 2024. Thanks, and have a good day.